Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salat wa salat na ismain wa nasta'inahu ma nasakfru. Wa ashadu la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. As-salamu alaykum. I, I want to share a story. Um, when I was in the Dallas area, shortly after 9-11, uh, the Dallas community received the onslaught of negative press from the Dallas Morning News uh, to the degree that they actually uh, staged a protest and a boycott at the Dallas Morning News. Uh, and it was continuous and ongoing. It was one thing after the next. It was always mischaracterizations of our Islamic terms. It was often every time they found a Muslim who had done something ugly, they would put that in the headlines. Uh, and it just got to a point that it was unbearable. And I think the thing that set the catalyst uh, for them to develop Ashura, and they would tried many times before, uh, but the catalyst was that there was, a, there was a, a killing of a Muslim woman and the Dallas Morning News printed a large full page article entitled Honor Killing Question Mark. And they went throughout the whole ordeal uh, of you know, ascribing that whole or conflating that incident to the entire Muslim community in the city. Mm -hmm. So a group of the community leaders were really concerned and got together and said, we need to do something. Uh, and so we all met, it was around 30 of us to have a sure. And the first question uh, that they presented, one of the brothers, the first statement he made to, to us was, well, we need to do something uh, because they're with uh, the image of our sisters, blah, blah, blah. And so my, my answer, my question to him was, well, how are you going to do that? Because none of them are here. And so I actually told him, whatever you need to do to get them involved, whether that means you got to build one of those walls like at the prison where you're talking through phones <laughs> or you got to put something up and you got to call back and forth or whatever it is that needs to be done, then that needs to be the process that we include everybody in this sure. So we did, we established the sure and they were very sluggish. I hate to say as usual, <laughs> I hate to say that, but just, I won't say as usual, but I'll say they were very sluggish about involving and including everybody in the process. So it made the actual progress sluggish. Established the sure, uh, uh, North Texas Islamic Council uh, they selected six of us to be on the shore. I was one of those. Uh, they said we had to do some outreach to the community, and they suggested that we stick with the organizations that did that. CARE would do all the media outreach and whatnot, and uh, Freedom and Justice Foundation would continue to do the governmental outreach, and that's the way it went. So I want to just share with you some of, the, some of the elements in terms of creating this environment. And why, why am I even talking about a shore in the city of Houston? One, because we don't have one. Uh, secondly, if just imagine if there was a catastrophe of 9-11 proportions, God forbid. But let's say if there was one, who would speak for the community? And I, I, my, my vision is that there would be many organizations saying a whole lot of stuff. And those many organizations would all have different opinions about how that should go. And there will be an argument about who is the leader and who isn't the leader and so forth and so on. And so it's not just for that situation, but it's imperative that we do it. First of all, what, when we say sure, and I was listening to all the talks here uh, that we've had today, and it all points to one thing, building relationships. The reason we can't have, we don't have uh, good con relationships or the reason why we find so much of a struggle uh, between youth and elders is relationship building. The reason uh, that we can't talk to our children about sex is because of relationship. The reason that we have misunderstandings in terms of how we do education has to do with our building a relationship. Uh, when we start talking about immigrant imams versus indigenous imams, it's all about relationships. I happen to be of the opinion that all of us bring value to this community, and I don't think that we need to have that conversation per se. I think it's divisive. I think that it leads because on the other end of that, if you say that the immigrant imam, imams cannot uh, teach indigenous people, then the opposite can occur when it comes to an indigenous imam being placed in the middle of one of our recently immigrant communities. And it, and it in and of itself becomes 
may be racist, uh, it can become very ethnic, et cetera. So it is incumbent upon us as Muslims to develop relationships, to help each other, to understand this community, to help each other bring knowledge from other places. I happen to be one of those products of being around a group of predominantly eminent immigrant brothers as a 19 year old kid in college. And I thank Allah every day for that community because they treated me like I was their long lost cousin. So it's important that we understand it's not the fact that they're immigrant or indigenous, it's what they bring to the table and that we all bring value. And that has to be recognized. So I think one of the things this uh, development, uh, a citywide sure or area wide sure, is we enjoin the Muslim community at large and help to unify, enhance our unity. Secondly, we provide an opportunity to leverage the diversity of this community. We have not yet in America leveraged the diversity of the Muslim community. And I feel that if we ever get to that point that we're leveraging our diversity, we would be impenetrable. Right now, people are picking us off one at a time. They're dividing us themselves. We don't have issues most of the time with Shia, Sunni, all this kind of stuff, but people aggravate that. And we need to have relationships with all of these communities, even though we will never solve the theological issues. We should have some type of relationship, at least. Uh, it helps facilitate consensus. Consensus don't mean we have to agree on everything, but once we come to a consensus, that means we did agree. Um, how does a council work? First of all, it's like establishing a mosque. You may have a small jamaat. Uh, people say we need to establish it and then they take it to the larger body and we go forth uh, after that and decide to establish a formal organization. How we make it work, we have a strategic plan for inclusion. Like how we start something is how it's going to end up. If we think it's important to have uh, everybody in it, then we should start off like that. We should start off with women in it. We should start off with youth in it. We should start off with every ethnic group in it. We should start off looking at the other various sectarian issues that we have and develop something around that. But we should plan to have it. We shouldn't just let it happen by consequence. Um, secondly, we need to de develop an agenda that promotes the common good, that we all are in this, uh, like I could just, every day I'm confronted with issues that affect the entire Muslim community. And we work with everybody. We're not a Sunni, Shia, Ahmadi, whatever. We work with Muslims. So I remember we had a project not too long ago where we worked with one community and people wanted to tell us, well, what you doing working with them? They're not really Muslims. I'm saying, well, if I had it with First Baptist Church, would you be calling me? <laughs> would you, if, I, if, if Temple Emmanuel said, Mustafa, we want you to work with the Jewish community. Yeah, we got a lot of heavy, hardcore Zionists here, but would you do it? And would the Muslims call me and say, don't work with them Zionists? So it's important for us to understand how divisive uh, some of our internal issues. In fact, I think that all of our issues, bare none, are internal. I don't think that Steve Emerson and Pam Geller and all these other people who are making di disparaging remarks about Muslims uh, actually uh, are the problem. It, it's up to us how we respond that's going to make a difference here. So what are some of the things we want you to avoid? Avoid failing to engage everyone. Avoid not having sisters as part of the Shura. Avoid allowing ethnic and racial divisions to exist in the fester and avoid favoring one meth sect, et cetera, because it's not about that. It's about our unity and it's about having a united front, whether we agree with each other or not, that it's important for us to have a united front when we're confronting issues that, that, have, that affect all of us. So when we want to enhance membership, we want you to visit and personally invite participants. Don't send representatives. Like I was a, a, one of the only African-Americans on the shore. So, they, so I said, well, why haven't you all invited the rest of the community? Well, that's what we got you here for, Brother Mustafa. I said, hold up. <laughs> Let, let's get something straight. You didn't get me here to bring all the rest of the Negroes. All right. I'm here as a part of this community. If you, do you think they're that stupid? Go down there. Ask the brothers to come yourself. Don't send me as a representative. That's insulting. All right. So it's important that we understand just and, and we talked about this personal relationship. We have to develop a personal relationship and see the value of what people bring to this community. Don't play these games. People know better. All right. Include checks and balances to assure transparency. It should be transparent. It shouldn't be a secret what we're doing, not amongst each other. 
All right, and then plan regularly to, to assure effectiveness and unity. We have to plan for these things, sisters and brothers. If we don't plan for it, it's not going to happen. And we hear this issue come up from time to time uh, about unity. But it, I think we think we all got to think the same and believe the same. It's not going to happen. All right, we come from different places. And for those of us who think that there's a, a such thing as a person who's not a Muslim or whatever, you know, tell that to the old nation of Islam where 250,000 Muslims actually came into the deen proper. It happened. And if, had, if, if we had applied the same type of uh, behavior, uh, we never would have had that group to come over. So it's important that we understand that and have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khairan. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.